Hey, what's up guys, Arava here, and welcome back to a brand new video here today, and the very first video on my channel for 2019. As you can see by the title, we've got a bit of a different good feel kind of video today. 10 reasons why we should all be excited about the 2019 F1 season. So, we've got a lot of changes going into F1 for 2019. Driver transfers, a bit, a bit of a different rule set for the air regulations, a little bit, not too much, but still a difference that you will visibly see. And so there's a lot of reasons to be excited. So, going into the new year, I thought we'd kick it off off on the channel with a good feel video like this. You know, let's start the year off with a good feel, positive video like this and look forward to the real life season. Obviously, the car launches are only uh, just over a month away, actually, you know, very start of February. So there's not actually that long to go for the winter period. Obviously, for me personally, the football's been keeping me over in terms of my sporting needs on the weekends and whatnot. But uh, it's always good when F1 starts up again. Testing's always a pretty nice time. So a bit like almost like a second Christmas for F1 fans when the cars launch. But here are 10 reasons why I think we should be very excited for the 20 2019 F1 season. And this is in no particular order or ranking. This is just almost like how it came to be, basically, when I thought about the brand new season. But coming in at number one, I'm going to say Ferrari versus Mercedes, part number three. Because we've had 2017, 2018, and now 2019 should be the closest, here's hoping, fight we get between Ferrari and Mercedes. You know, 2017, Vettel was there. The car was... Not really there. The Ferrari car seemed a bit more comfortable around most circuits, whereas the Mercedes was a bit of a specialist. You know, we had tracks like Singapore where Ferrari were clearly better. Obviously, that didn't go to plan in 2017. And then 2018, the roles reversed a little bit almost because Ferrari went for a longer wheelbase car, but their car exponentially improved quite a fair bit. And for the first part of the season, it looked like they had it. And then Mercedes, you know, ramped up the development, you know, dug deep and they came back. So I think this year uh, for 2019, like Sebastian Vettel said, um, you know, last year they just didn't have that little last bit and he's hoping all of us you know all, I'm sure all of us are hoping that they have that last bit so it can be a real out and out fight Ferrari v Mercedes I mean we're also hoping maybe Red Bull can get into the mix but I'll get into that but Ferrari v Mercedes part three either way it's still going to be a really interesting contest because for the third time now it'll be Sebastian Vettel going up against Lewis Hamilton maybe for the championship you would say but there's a big but to that first part because number two I'm going to say is the fact that Charles Leclerc now is going to be in Ferrari for 2019 and a lot of people including myself are eagerly anticipating a really good fight between him and Sebastian Vettel I think you know he has the potential to do what Ricardo did to Vettel or Red Bull in 2014 ruffle the feathers a little bit you know get under his skin and maybe try and undermine him a little bit in that team of course that is Sebastian's team basically but you got the kind of golden boy coming through the Ferrari Academy you know so many people love him you know the popularity is off the scale for a young driver like this and you know for the first time in Europe Yonkers, Ferrari are putting a young driver in their car. Usually Ferrari is always, you know, esteemed drivers. They've, you know, showed their pedigree. They've got, you know, many, many Grand Prix on their belt. Then they go to Ferrari as that's the kind of ultimate dream, I guess, of most F1 drivers to drive for the guys in red. But Leclerc, youngster, comes in one year debut and into the Ferrari. Such a hot prospect. Obviously, away from him versus Vettel, just also him maybe versus Hamilton. You know, we've heard the press talk about this new era fighting, you know, Leclerc, Verstappen coming through, uh, finally, you know, maybe ready to make a title challenge versus Hamilton and Vettel. So you've got the new guard kind of maybe for the first time in 2019 making a stand. To that point, number three is going to be a potential for a four-way title fight. You never know between Hamilton, Vettel, Leclerc and Verstappen. If the new guard does truly come through, you would say Red Bull, probably Verstappen is going to be the lead driver. Gas Lastly, I, I like him a lot as a driver, but if I'm being honest, he's probably not going to match Verstappen over the entire season. I hope I'm proven wrong and he can take it to Verstappen sometimes because that'd be great for me personally as I'm a fan of Gasly's. But I also like Verstappen and I think he's obviously going to be the lead favourite at Red Bull Honda. That in itself is going to be crazy. But, you know, if Verstappen can pull his socks up, Vettel Hamilton do. Uh, they've both said in interviews that they think Verstappen is ready for a title fight next year after what he's shown in the last two, three years of developing and maturing as a driver somewhat. And then obviously, you know, a lot of people putting a lot of faith in Leclerc to step in and get comfortable straight away. So the, the thought of a four-way fight like that is mouth-watering. Two Ferraris, a Merc, a Red Bull, and then, uh, you know, the Merc and the Red Bull maybe backed up by their wingmen of Bottas and maybe Gasly will inevitably have to maybe uh, bend over a little bit if Red Bull, obviously we know Red Bull aren't afraid of doing some team orders sometimes, but at the same time, they're a bit more free uh, to a case compared to Mercedes, so that's debatable, but definitely Mercedes, you would say probably I'm um, pipping Bottas not really do too much in 2019, so I think it is going to be that kind of case. So that is just so mouth-watering. Four, can you imagine that? Four-way four fight, a legit four-way fight with these new cars, these new faces, 
it'd be absolutely awesome. Number four, up and down the paddock, I'm going to go for the potential of better battles. Of course, we have new, brand new aero regulations for 2019, a simpler front wing, and so that should, in theory, uh, according to the uh, bosses, uh, Ross, Braun, and whatnot, try and reduce the dirtier, improve overtaking, it remains to be seen. A lot of analysts inside the paddock, engineers inside the paddock are saying, you know, a lot of the top teams already have gained back the downforce they are going to lose with the front wing in other areas of the car. And so net-wise, that might not actually mean too much. The lap times might not be affected too much. But it is all about the airflow shape. I will say that, you know, your pure downforce being made elsewhere around the car still means that there might be a better airflow shape around the front wing and ultimately, uh, you know, basically downstream of the front wing into the front wheels and then ultimately to the back of the car that will be different if it's enough difference I don't know you know I'm even skeptical myself if it's really going to be that much of a difference I think we need to take it with a pinch of salt you know what they said in 2017 that overtaking would be near impossible it wasn't near impossible but it was a lot harder than it was from 2016 you know the difference you saw there was less overtakes um so I think I want to kind of say let's half take in what people are saying I think there are going to be a few instances a few races where it really does make a difference. But at certain tracks, I feel like, like Melbourne, for example, the opening round, I feel like Melbourne is just such a horrendous track for overtaking dirty air that you won't see much of a difference. Whereas other tracks, maybe like Alice Spain, Brazil, late on in the season, where typically you talk about dirty air and hard to overtake, I think those kind of open, more open plan tracks, you will see a difference maybe here and there. But I think Melbourne is just such a difficult track as is that it won't, it'll be hard to make an impact. Number five is going to be the brand new marriage between Honda and Red Bull. Now, Honda improved a lot in 2018 to the point where, you know, I think their reliability and the penalties they had to take masked that they are, I think and I think a lot of people and definitely the insiders of Red Bull and Toro Rosso believe that Honda do have a faster power unit now than Renault, like out and out horsepower. Maybe there's a difference between you know electrical deployment and stuff like that and taking penalties and management during the race like the Hondas might have to manage their engine more during the race but I think out and out power, I think Honda have actually caught up and I think Toro Rosso's bad chassis has masked the actual real progress Honda has made so I'm I'm going to tip Red Bull Honda to be a very good package. Either way, it's going to be exciting just to have Honda in the Red Bull car. You know, a new engine for a new team. Uh, you've got Gasly, who's obviously very familiar with Honda from Toro Rosso, but also his Super Formula days. So he's very ingrained with the Japanese culture, I guess, of, you know, working. And so he's going to be a massive aid to Red Bull there. So I think in a way, I, I feel like I hope Gasly can bend into that and use that to his advantage of being able to work with the Honda engineers a lot more than Verstappen maybe could uh, when it comes to the first few races. But that entire partnership is going to be really cool and I really hope that Red Bull you know they're they're good marketers I really hope Red Bull come out with a fancy new kind of not massively new but newish sort of livery to kind of alter pay homage to their new Japanese kind of partnership there with Honda number six is going to be seeing how Daniel Ricciardo fares at Renault will he be a new man obviously he got very frustrated he got beaten down like literally you, you, the guy was already dead and we just shot him some more at the end of 2018 so it's gonna be really interesting to see how one his mentality is going for the first few races, you know, how is he feeling, what his goals are, and just really seeing how he settles in, because we've had Ricardo. obviously he was at Toro Rosso and HRT, but it honestly it's felt like, you know, you know, from just for the sake of memory fading from those previous years, he's been in Red Bull for ages now, so it really is almost like Vettel going to Ferrari, it's not the same kind of calibre, exactly, but it still is going to a works team of Renault, and so it's going to be really interesting to see how Ricardo does, especially also against Hulkenberg, because I think still, I think there's still a fair few people that underrate Hulkenberg, I think he does a very solid job for what he's there to do at Renault. And it's going to be interesting to see because obviously that's basically Hulkenberg's team. Does Ricardo come in probably earning more money straight away in 2019? Will he come in with a big flex? And will he try and establish a kind of hold over the team? That remains to be seen. But that's going to be another interesting kind of teammate relationship dynamic like with Leclerc and Vettel that we're going to see in 2019 play out. I think that's going to be really exciting for off the track as well as on the track. Number seven is going to be the potential of Sauber going even one better. Obviously Alfa Romeo back Sauber and, you know, obviously they're back before in 2017 and 2016 you know they kind of got some new, new backers but then for 2018 I do believe Alfa Romeo pumping a lot of funds for Sauber and that's be the biggest difference to be honest I think is over that season of development and they talked about you know Leclerc talked about that they stopped development on that Sauber you know intricate development really early on in the season and so this next year's car should be quite tasty I'm hoping Sauber can make that step up to literally a staple midfield team you know they, they've gone into Q3 so many times but a lot of the time they 
did kind of fall back a little bit sometimes due to strategy calls or whatnot. And they weren't exactly fully up there with the likes of Haas and Renault all the time. It'd be really great to see Sauber make that step forward and establish themselves for a second year in a row now as a proper midfield team. Because they've done it once in 2018 now. Let's do it again in 2019. And obviously the caveat of Raikkonen, Giovinazzi. That's going to be so exciting. Raikkonen, I think for him, he personally looks so much happier already in Sauber. You know, at the Sauber Christmas party, he seems so much more, you know, just happy, you know, and just fulfilled of being at Sauber, the weight off his shoulders of being at Ferrari. You know, obviously you guys know I'm assigned to the Veloce Esports team. Our team powers the Sauber Esports team. So our Esports drivers actually went to the Sauber Christmas party, hung out with Kimi. And according to them, he also seemed, you know, just really calm. You know, the guys that went there, the founders at Veloce, you know, he just said that Raikkonen seemed happier. So I think you're going to see a, 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 a just a better Kimi. I think a positive Kimi, obviously not very talkative still, but still positive. And I think his experience is going to be so, so good for Sauber in terms of development, just set up work each weekend. And it's been great for Giovinazzi on the other side of the garage. I, I like Gio. You know, he hasn't, he's had a bit of a bumpy start into F1, you know, had had that run in Sauber before he crashed on track. I Hopefully people don't crucify him. I remember him just for that because I think he does have some potential, but he is very... Uh, what, what's the word? He drives very aggressively, you know, he's very prone to some oversteer. So hopefully he can settle in and Raikkonen can help that transition in. Number eight is going to be the revival of Williams, maybe. Uh, they got Kibitza and they got George Russell. Very weird pairing there. Kibitza's coming back. That in itself is going to be a story to behold. Personally, for me, I'm not too fussed about that, but I know a lot of old retro F1 fans will really love that name coming back into the sport. George Russell as well, having a multi-year deal at Williams. Um, that's going to be exciting for him to see how he goes and grows into this year because it seems like he's going to be there for at least two years but Williams how do they go on one they're going to have a new livery not going to be Martini anymore what's that going to look like and then also how are they going to cope you know will they have enough funding to grow the team they've talked about restructuring you know just rethinking their team you know, how's that going to go? Will it actually work out or will it be another disaster year for them? Remains to be seen, but that's going to be very intriguing to see. Number nine kind of goes with the Ricardo thing I said earlier, but how will Renault do? You know, the reports are uh, some of the Renault guys are cautiously really optimistic that they've made really good gains on their 2019 car. I said at the time, there's got to be a reason more than also money and a new change of scenery why Ricardo wanted to go to Renault. I think Renault have a long-term plan. It might not just be, it might not be an instant impact of 2019 of like they're straight away, you know, able to win a race or a podium. But I think it's going to be a case of there is a actual long-term set out plan where you can see hopefully goals are going to be set and Ricardo can hopefully uh, basically evaluate it and see, okay, it's going the way. If not, he can jump ship in 2021. Uh, but I think Renault, I, I hope, I hope they have a step up you know I, I have a good feeling that they will make a step up I don't think it will be enough to challenge Red Bull Ferrari and Merck but it will be a significant enough step up that we might see a surprise podium from them who knows heck you know if there's any rain there's some crashing maybe even a win that would be really cool to see but it's going to be awesome to see how Renault develop because from 2017 to 2018 they made a huge leap so let's see what 2018 to 2019 is like and then finally number 10 McLaren well to be honest I'm just looking forward to McLaren memes to be honest because I'll be honest now after you know I'm a Jensen Button fan I don't really support any other driver like like I used to support Jensen I have my favorites here and there like ones I like but I will never truly support a driver like I did Jensen but because of that I have a little bit of a soft spot for McLaren um and I kind of still wanted them to kind of get revived basically but I've had enough of them now. I don't care anymore for them. Uh, it's going to be a tough year for them. I think Lando Norris and Carlos Sainz are two great drivers. I think both of them are also, you know, going into it, being very cautious about what they can do. The McLaren team restructuring, they're already cautiously optimistic, apparently. So... I don't know. I think they'll make an improvement. They'll make a step forward. I think that's a given. They have to. They have to. There's no way they don't. But I still think there will be potential for some great memes from McLaren over the year. So that's something I'm looking forward to from them. That is 10 things I think we should all be looking forward to for the 2019 F1 season. Guys, if you did enjoy the video and you did agree with those points, then be sure to hit that like button. Let me know in the comments below, though, if there's anything I missed out that you're looking forward to personally for 2019. A specific driver that you... Because I didn't mention the Force Indians or Hasses, but the kind of a bit of a midfield kind of nothing's really going to change for them I don't think uh, but let me know if you're really looking forward to you know something that develops with those guys or anything I just maybe missed off or any you know tweaks to the points I made if you are new around here do get subscribed for weekly fall long content hope you guys had a good new year and here's to 2019 I think it's gonna be a really stellar season for not only the F1 uh, real life season you know the F1 game 
the the content on this channel. I'm looking forward to it for 2019. It's going to be epic. So I hope you guys just uh, are looking forward to all of it, basically, for this next year. But I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. I've been around for goodbye.